I have returned to one of my favorite cities in the whole world. I'm here in Cusco, Peru. It's full of ancient stonework that's just in incredible examples like this, the Inca stonework that's still standing today, and that the city is built upon. This city is magical. I love this place, the way that the hills just extend up from the city center, and it's just full of these amazing narrow streets and beautiful architecture. I'm gonna be exploring all over Peru, but Cusco is one of the best adventure hubs that you can ask for. So I'm actually meeting up with some guides here today, exploring some of the sacred valley that's around here, going river rafting, exploring some of the ancient sites. I'm super stoked to be back in Peru. This is actually where I fell in love with international travel in the first place. So this river is one of the main attractions for river rafting in Cusco. Just a few rivers like this has a archaeological remains along the river. It's a sacred river for the Incas because the original river name was the Wilcamayu, which means sacred river in Quechua. Ready, please. Primero? Sí. Bueno, claro. Señorita? We're gonna be going through the Urubamba River, which is one of the main rivers through the Sacred Valley. It's a really critical river, and it's a beautiful river. Not only are we gonna be surrounded by incredible mountainsides, but also some of the ancient Inca cities and features as well. And uh, we're gonna be paddling and having a great time, but now it's time to get on the river. Watch your head. Woo. Good thing I'm wearing Woo. the helmet. Woo. What kind of class river is this? Uh, one of the rapids is, is three plus. Three plus. But in the rainy season, it's a class four, or class five. Wow. Sometimes unrunnable. Really? Because it's so high. Very good rapids, a lot of action and adrenaline. I have some experience doing rafting in different parts of the world. This is one of the unique river in the world that has archaeological remains in both sides of the river. So this is not just a natural experience, it's also a, a historical, a, a archaeological, cultural experience. Exactly. Cultural experience. So. Down river is Puerta Spunku. That means La Puerta del Viento, the, the gate of the wind, ah. or wind gate. Why do they call it that? You will, you will see. <laughs> So I'll just preface this by saying we were having a wonderful time and uh, then Pepe decided to turn the reins over to me and control the boat. And I'm just trying to keep the boat kind of in the middle doing my thing. Adelante! Woo! And all of a sudden Pepe just gets more and more nervous and I'm just like, still haven't figured out the oars yet. And then he's like, no, you missed the takeout. I was like, the takeout? I didn't know that was right here. Okay, let me, let me, let me take it. <laughs> We had to circle around and paddle upstream and fight our way because if we miss this takeout, we're going all the way to Machu Picchu. Fun and adrenaline and heart pounding adventure. So getting to experience the river here was such a wonderful way to be here in Peru and kick off our amazing adventures here. Today I'm visiting El Mangal, it's a lodge here in Peru, and it specializes here in cacao. And there is a particular variety that is actually an endangered variety of cacao that they have been taking care of. Today I'm gonna to get a chance to plant one and to see the whole process of how pure cacao is made here in Peru. I like Porfi's style. He's got the style of a true farmer of the Andes. Wow, look at that. I did not expect the cacao to be looking white inside. This is the variety that we just planted, the Cascara de Huevo, and it's a smaller seed, which has made it uh, not as desirable for mass production. Cacao is coming from the tree, it's coming here. Yeah. It's almost a fermentation, it's to make it dry. To dry them. So right now we're prepping the seeds to make chicha, and it's a sweet drink that's uh, very important for the workers when they're harvesting, when it's nice and fresh. Mas, mas, mas. Ya está. Ok. El fricción está importante. Exacto. Yeah. It smells good. Woo. So at this stage in the process, we are trying the ponche, which is pure cacao mixed with water that was boiled. Wow. Super fuerte. Yeah, that's so good. Sugar and milk to make it chocolate. Wow. That's good. After a hard day's work of being a cacao farmer, I've got a full stomach and a happy heart. I will miss Amangal Lodge.
So we've encountered a small problem here. We're in this super narrow canyon, crazy roads. This truck here has now broken down in front of us and completely blocking the route. We've got uh, people getting impatient here behind us on both sides. It looks like the guy's stuck for the next five hours. I hope that that is not the case because we need to keep moving. Well, I guess they need a push, but they're not willing to coordinate because they work for different companies. I guess it must be a liability thing. Don't blame them there. Uh, crew here is rallying to open a passage up so that some of the cars can pass at least. It is tight. <laughs> One car already drove through here and there was about uh, two millimeters on each side. We're, we're gonna set up a little, little community right here on the roadside. So I got a little cocoa ice cream and uh, some toilet paper. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. We could be here a while. So we just got an update. Uh, we got authorization for the two companies to work together. So we're bringing in some heavy machinery and we're actually gonna try to shift this large truck towards the cliffside, allowing us enough room to pass. I'm kinda scared here. We're right on the edge of the cliff. We just got about 300 tons worth of heavy machinery. It's working! It's working! We're gonna be able to pass! Now, it's time to go. That was like a three hour delay. We've got an adventure to get to. We've been driving along and seeing passion fruit everywhere. Inside the white one, it's a... Uh... I would say like a tentacles, with very sweet. Uh, tentacles? Yeah, like, like, like a tentacles. <laughs> uh, Porfi just saw a farmer that had, had some box stop, so he was taking them to market. So we thought we'd save the guy a little trip, and uh, we're just gonna eat uh, this alien larva that's inside. The texture is uh, unique, but the taste is very good. So we've been driving all day, and we've come to a point where an old landslide is actually made the road not possible to cross. So we've come to a walking bridge. We're going to have to cross the walking bridge with everything that we need for the next three days of trekking. We're linking up with another vehicle on the other side to continue to our actual trailhead for the trek. But it kind of feels like the expedition starts right now. So we arrived really late at Yanama, which is the beginning of our trek. Just setting my tent up, getting it right perched on this edge. It's an amazing viewpoint. And then it's time for dinner. They have a little surprise for me here. We have a special welcome for you. Oh yeah? It's coming from the host family. A very special dish. It's like a, you are a special guest. Oh, so wow. Do something. Yeah, that looks amazing. Us. It's our custom to have in, in our town. Yeah. Like uh, in our birthday, anniversary, and like this moment you will come dinner for you. Wow, that looks intense. Here in Peru, there is a cultural tradition to offer a guest or somebody that you're trying to please to give them a cooey. Now, in the US, uh, eating guinea pig might be like, kind of like eating a pet. However, you have to kind of step back a second and be like, well, these people are trying to show me great respect. And uh, the texture is interesting, kind of like eating into a football that tastes really good. Oh, wow. That's got a really nice flavor. The biggest object of, of eating kui is just getting over the mind game of eating this thing that's practically smiling back at you as you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it is time for action. It has been a mission just to get here. But now we've camped at our base camp, which is Yanama here, loading up the horses with our gear for the next few days. And we're going to Vicos. So it's gonna be the next three days of trekking through the mountains. This whole trek is really off the beaten path. Most people are on the main Inca trail or the Salcantay, but here we're gonna be practically on our own in the mountains. It's gonna be rugged, it's gonna be beautiful. Can't wait.